Beans and zucchini in here and corn. Uh, on the far side of this field, courtesy of Howard Jones that's doing your filming, is he brought a big 50 pound box of Jerusalem artichoke seeds a few years ago. So there's uh, five beds over there and we just leave them as a bit of a perennial now. So we, you know, you harvest them all through the winter, you sell them at the stand, you sell them to restaurants. Uh, every time you're digging, you always put one back in and build it and put the hill back in. And then in the spring, what we usually do is just run the rotavator and the hillovers over it and the mulch. And then that way it just creates a whole new seed bed once they start to shoot. And then it's the just sun chokes. Kind of, it's just kind of there. And I'll probably go through with that little hedge trimmer and I'll probably cut down a few just to make a bit of space because sometimes they start to get thick over time. Cause right. They're pretty heavy right. producers. Um, and then over here, there's a few things that I like to leave here. Nice. This, uh, what is that? This is parsnip. This is parsnip? But yeah, there's all different pollinators. Like, see, if you look inside of here, you got different. I'm just trying to see if they're, they're up and at it right now. See, look over here, you get different. There's different things that are around that I think that you end up having less problem, I think, with certain uh, bugs and diseases. If you leave certain plants that are susceptible to that, like the carrot family, if you leave amounts of those to go to seed, because it actually allows other insects inside of that system to exist. Wow. You know, like, okay, there's the rust fly, but if you let a carrot go to seed and you let it do all its thing, in the seed process, there's a whole other realm of insects which show up on top of those plants. Wonderful. So I like, because, you know, the Queen Anne's lace is normally a part of the ecosystem here. So just allowing the, the, the area for these things to go to seed, just for no other reason than letting them be, and for that, you tend to have less damage in that in balance. Type of crops. Everything's yeah. balanced. Yeah. I love it. There's a... And that's a lot of sun chokes, Dave. <laughs> and the thing about those that's okay is that uh like this year here i got the pipes are over here and i had to pull the line i usually have a line yep. here to irrigate these but they don't mind getting a bit dried out in the summer because they don't really start forming fruit till later on and they, october and, and yeah definitely not going to kill them and so if you don't quite get to these guys this is where things like this are kind of just like a little bit of emergency food blanket for the winter yeah because right? you get a good income out of things like this in the winter time and they just sort of are a pretty low maintenance crop. Yeah. Because they kind of just look after themselves. Yeah. Yeah, that's they, fabulous. They really don't do anything to them. No, <laughs> no. Lazy man's farming. I love it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, on that note, you'll see here's here's one of those sections that I, I was talking to you about. Here's... Wow, this soil's nice. Pretty fabulous. That purslane too is nice. I eat that. So what you see is this this row is still here with the kale, but the other stuff, this so this this was a late I like to grow the Russian kale in the winter. I usually don't plant it till right. about the beginning of August just because when you're growing large blocks of kale, it tends to get a lot of mildews and crap in the summer if you're yeah, not, wood. If you're Bugs. not if you're not harvesting it down all the time. And the Russian kale goes really fast. But what's happening in this section here, as you'll see, is uh, I have red clover, which has now gone to seed, right? So you're fixing nitrogen inside of this section. There's some grass here, which isn't really going to bother me. And then you also have here, when you look down, all of these little kales from last year are just setting their seeds. So these, these were, again, a baby kale for the winter. These weren't like the early planted kales that get nice and big, but this is a nice consistent. So they're self-sowing here. Right. And so what you'll see is now the birds are starting to get into these casings. The seeds are setting. Uh, I have, we had our, see the seeds are just starting to turn brown in here. Nice. And so pretty soon Viable. what we'll do is we'll mow this whole section down with a, with a flail. That's going to get grass seed, every kind of seed, clover seed, the kale seed in. Then what we'll do is I'll run the manure spreader over here with the leaf mulch, right? So the big double axle New Holland comes in, spits out a beautiful carpet full of mulch over here. And then I'll put, uh, I'll spread lime on here. Um, and then I'll go back to irrigating. I'll shallow till all that in. Just shallow, you're not really wrecking the root, the, the, the soil structure. Just a bit of No shallow, till just almost. Shallow, just a bit of shallow tillage just to get the grass that's in here. Kind of its roots exposed to the summer sun, sun just to kill off kill it. there. And then you can start irrigating. And the thing with that is you can till that over. You can let those roots all get burned off. 
for a week or two, and then you can start watering because all your kale seeds just sitting. It's just Wonderful. Gonna sit. It's just going to sit there until you activate it. You're the magician who says. Fantastic. Oh. So add water, and then it goes. And then this piece here was an early spinach. Right now it's just sort of sitting. Normally it would have activated another set of weeds, but we've had a really, really dry June. So that one's just sitting for the moment. And then when I start to spread this with the compost, I'll spread that. And then being a very, very south facing direct field, I tend to like to not to get into this field again until sort of later August. And that's just gonna make it so I don't have to do too much watering up here. Because watering is one thing, but excessive watering is not fun. No. Well, this is Howie Jones, and this is at Dave Chambers' Organic Farm. And this has been a fabulous time. And uh, this is a beans, and we're at here now. And much love and respect. Take care of Mother Earth. Take care of yourself. Tell someone you love them.